Uh, welcome to the first 716 Music Post Tunes Talk, everyone. My name is Julian Bergio, and today with me is Peter Kirk of Panama Wedding. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us, Pete. Yeah, glad to do it. Uh, Panama Wedding is going to be at the Waiting Room at 334 Delaware Ave this Thursday on October 30th. And uh, right now, your song, All of the People, it's all over the airwaves, and uh, it's been stuck in my mind all week. So uh, tell me a little bit about your inspiration there. Uh, well, All of the People was a song that I wrote in the wintertime, funny enough. I think in February, and I was maybe like dreaming of the summertime, and um, I think I wanted to, to make a song that had a dance feel to it that was uplifting that sort of evokes the feelings of spring turning into summer and um, I think we released it in the summer and I, I think it just sort of struck a chord with people and um, really resonated with people and it really like blew up <laughs> yeah kind of crazy well tell me a little bit about that too um, you've really kind of blown up rather quickly over, over the past year um, how's that been for you been awesome. Uh, I don't know what to say. You know, it's, it's a little crazy. At the same time, we just this past week marks this the first year anniversary of our debut live show. We had been playing together as a band for one year, and within that year, we've obviously gotten some incredible opportunities to tour the United States, the UK, to do a few things on TV. So it's been really fantastic. Um, but I think right now, our focus is finishing up the full-length record and getting ready for our tour, which is up, coming up in uh, November. We're going on tour with a band called Small Pools and Magic Band. Nice. So uh, in, in the video for all of the people, you kind of do like a karaoke kind of style thing where you've got the words playing behind you, almost as if you're doing karaoke at a bar. Where'd you come up with that idea? It was actually the director, John John, uh, August Stavo. He directed the first shot by Macklemore and among other pretty popular videos. He, he just had the idea. We, we got a few treatments from different directors, some of which were kind of cool, some of, which were, some of which were a bit more abstract and sort of artsy. And John John just had this idea to make this sort of fun, lighthearted, kind of whimsical video of people in the bar singing along to all the people. And uh, I think that really sort of captured the idea and the essence of the song. It doesn't, it's not a song that really takes itself too seriously. It's, it's, it's supposed to be catchy and kind of lighthearted. And I think we just like the idea of bringing a lot of different kind of folks into the picture and, and having them just have fun and dance along to the song. And we shot it out in LA in the middle of the summer and we released it, uh, I think a month or two ago. And so far it's, it's, it's done pretty well. It's, um, you know, it's, I think it will probably get a little more traction once the full record's out, but, um, we're definitely happy with it. It, it, it's a really fun video to watch, and I think it really encaptures that, that vibe of the sound. Um, speaking of the, yeah, exactly. And speaking of the sound, I, I've kind of heard it described by other people as like an 80s kind of poppy feel. I've, I've heard it described as similar. It reminds people of Little Mermaid, kind of the bounciness to it. Um, how would you describe like, the Little sound? Little Mermaid the movie? Yeah, I've, I've, I've definitely heard that. A couple people, <laughs> um, that it, it kind yeah, of has like that, that, that bouncy I'll, I'll feel. You dig it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, look, I mean, it's, it's impossible to predict how anyone's going to interpret it, you know, a song, but um, I think it's all good. I, uh, some people think it's 80s leaning. Some people have described it, um, you know, in other ways. Certainly, Little Mermaid is, is a new one. But <laughs> I think at the end of the day, um, I think at the end of the day, there's a certain thread among what what people say about it and i think ultimately people feel good when they listen to it and yeah. I, I think that was the, the, the goal of it really um you know it's it's, it's all, there's a certain like I think especially embedded in the lyrics there's a certain level of catharsis about 
getting out of a crowded city in the summertime and getting out and escaping. And, and I think that's something that resonates with people. A absolutely. So what, uh, if, if what, what kind of influence have you had, if not in that song, but just over your, your songwriting career, I guess? Many. That's always the hardest question to ask, but since you answer, yeah. I think specific to all of the people, I remember writing it, I liked like, Burning Down the House by Talking Heads, I just like the kind of bouncy feel to it. Um, there was a sort of weightlessness to the song, and that was definitely an inspiration for all of the people. Um, I think specific to kind of my wedding in general, there's a, there, we throw a lot of influence influences from like some of the, the adult contemporary artists in the 80s like Peter Gabriel or um, later on maybe in excess um, and I've always been you know I've said this in other interviews but I've always been a big fan of Mutt Lang's records whether it's like Billy Ocean or Def Leppard or Shania Twain I've always I've always really been drawn to his very precise and tight clean arrangements and that's that's all really been an influence at least for me when I produce for Pat and my wedding um, but beyond that I mean there, there's so many obviously like the Beatles and, you know Bob Dylan and all that but um, I don't know if there's like one specific <laughs> reference point. right so yeah. what what's been really the most exciting thing that's happened to you since uh, over this past year and, and with the success you've had I think there's a lot of different sort of milestones that, that we've, um, we've, we've had this past year, but playing our first live shows last year was a really exhilarating experience. We, we all sort of had been playing in different bands and projects individually before kind of my wedding, but to make the jump to playing venues like Bowery Ballroom in New York City and then making a jump to playing a place like Webster Hall when we went on tour with RAC. Those were really big moments. And when we, remember the first time we played to a really big crowd in LA at the LA Theater, that was that was really big. And obviously playing Jimmy Kimmel on TV at yeah. our first late night appearance was a huge moment for us. I think there's all sort of been uh, a handful of different moments that have, have stuck out that have all sort of equally been important in their own different ways. Um, you know, it, it's, it's really been, um, it's really been fantastic. I mean, at the same time, we work really, really hard on the live show and we're, we're never, we're never really like fully satisfied or happy with it. We're always trying to figure out ways to improve how we can sound better. And, you know, now with, finishing up the full length record we're, we're constantly looking at the songs and making sure that they sound good live um so so in one sense it's like to answer your question like it's it's it can be sometimes difficult to be like objective about any experience you're going through whether you're on tour because you're always thinking like oh how do we sound tonight or maybe this wasn't working mm -hmm. right or this, this, you know but there have been those moments that we've kind of stepped back and been like, whoa, what just happened? That's crazy. So, um, yeah, definitely Kimmel, definitely playing Bowery Ballroom, doing like the El Rey. Those have all been really big. And I think now the next phase, I think, which is going to be exciting for us is to, to do, you know, especially like a place like Buffalo where we're going to be playing a show where we're, we're one of like the head, I think we're like a headline on, on the bill or yeah. one of the headliners or something like that. Like to that is like a really special thing for us because we've, we played so many shows as support acts, where which have, like, honestly gone very well. But like, most of the people there aren't there to see us. You know, we're just sort of like the, the opener, right? But to, to play shows where there are people specifically coming to us is extremely exciting yeah. for us. So I think that's sort of like the next phase of Panama wedding, and you know, we're working really hard at it. Great. Any uh, any plans while you're in Buffalo? Do you have time to catch the falls or anything like that? We, uh, that's a great question. We haven't really talked about it. I think it's going to be a pretty tight window. Yeah. Uh, we, we were, we stopped in Buffalo not to play, but we, uh, when we were coming back from our U.S. tour, we had a gig in Albany, so we stopped off in Buffalo for the night, and we went to, like, a Bill Gray's and 
ate breakfast nice. and just kind of like tooled around downtown Buffalo, which was kind of fun actually. So, um, I don't know if we have any like specific plans, but I think it's going to be kind of an in and out thing. But I, I remember going there last spring. It was it was a really cool town, and you know, hopefully we could. We, we play a good show. We'll be back up. <laughs> Great. Well, we're uh, we're excited to have you this upcoming Thursday. Thanks again for taking the time to do the interview with us. Uh, I, I really appreciate it, Peter. Oh, anytime. All right, man. Be good. Take care. Thanks. That was the first ever 716 Music Post Tunes Talk. My name's Julian Bergio. Don't forget to catch Panama Wedding this Thursday at the Waiting Room, October 30th, 334 Delaware Avenue. Tickets at alternativebuffalo.com. Uh, just a dollar seven there. Thank you again. This is uh, Julian Bergio once again with 716 Music Post. Have a great day and keep it groovy, everybody.